This is the all-new Minisforum G7 Pro, and it just happens to be their most powerful mini gaming PC yet. I mean, this thing is putting down some serious performance given the CPU and discrete GPU they opted to use in this unit. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at and testing out the all-new Minisforum G7 Pro coming to us from their Atom Man series. This thing is packing some serious performance, and we've seen this overall design before from the company, but we've yet to see a mini PC packing these kind of specs from Minis Forum yet. And this is a true mini gaming PC. It's going to handle any AAA game you throw at it. It's got a 24 core, 32 thread CPU, and it's backed by an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070. The new G7 Pro is meant to sit vertically on the desk, so it does come with this nice little stand. It also comes with a 280 watt power supply and an HDMI cable. Once we throw this in the stand, it looks a little something like this, and I do love the way these things look. Super thin design, not going to take up much room on the desk, but I do wish they would have made this one a bit shorter. Now, once we crack it open, we're going to take a look at the cooling system, and you'll understand why it's a bit taller. I mean, the cooling system in here is absolutely massive. And when it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got our power button. There's also a performance mode button. We've got a work mode and a game mode. Fully addressable RGB up front. Two full-size USB 3 ports. USB Type-C, a 3.5mm audio jack, and a full-size SD card reader. Moving around back here, we've got our exhaust bins for the cooling system. Our power input for that included 280 watt power supply. USB 4 full-size HDMI, another full-size USB 3 port, and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. We will do a quick teardown in just a second, but I wanted to go over the specs here. And when it comes to the CPU, they opted to use the Intel Core i9-14900HX. We've got 24 cores, 32 threads, and it's configured in a way where we've got 8 performance cores that can clock up to 5.8 gigahertz, and 16 efficiency cores that can do up to 4.1. It's got an NVIDIA RTX 5070 laptop version with 8 gigs of VRAM. This has 32 gigs of DDR5 running at 5600 megatransfers per second, but it'll support up to 96 gigs. Dual channel SODIMM slots. Two NVMe 2280 PCIe 4.0 slots. Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and out of the box, it's running Windows 11. Now I wanted to give you a look at the internals and it's actually pretty simple to get in here. There's three screws on the bottom and the side panel is going to slide right up. You can pull it off. From here, you can see we've got one populated 2280 slot, but we've got a free one right here. PCIe 4.0 slots. Again, this did come with Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 and dual SODIMM RAM slots. I've got the 32 gig model here, but it looks like they only used one stick. So I'm not sure we may be able to gain a little performance by adding another stick here. You can add up to 96 gigs here, but RAM prices are ridiculous right now. And I think that's the reason they only use the single stick in this unit. But uh, I'd say the most interesting thing here is the cooling system. Dual fan design, and as you can see, there's some pretty beefy heat pipes here. Uh, with the original G7, I never really had an issue with thermal throttling or anything like that. But with this, it is packing much more performance, so we'll definitely take a look at that by the end of the video. Okay, so I've been testing the system out for a little while now. Everything's been working great. And as you can see, we've got that Intel Core i9-14900HX. 24 cores, 32 threads. I mean, we've got quite a bit here. 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600 megatransfers per second. And we've got the NVIDIA GeForce RTX. 5070 laptop GPU with 8 gigs of VRAM. I really wish NVIDIA would have taken this up to at least 10. But either way, we should still see some pretty decent performance from this. And when it comes down to it, Minisporum does have their own control center built in. There's a little bit that we can do here. So we've actually got two different modes. And remember, from the front of the unit, you can also press that button. It'll take us into those modes from there also. So we've got a work mode here and we've got a game mode. Obviously, when you're gaming, you definitely want to be in game mode. Uh, lighting effects on the front, a little bit that we can change here and there. And from settings, wind key disabled, uh, quick cooling, we can turn this on and that fan will ramp up when quick cooling is on. And obviously it'll get louder, but it will stay cooler. Now, the first thing I wanted to do here was check out the TDP on the CPU. And we're going to be in, well, let's go to work mode and check it first. I've got CPU-Z. I've also got hardware info up and running. 
So what I'm gonna do is stress the CPU out. This is gonna max out all the cores and threads. And in work mode, it looks like this thing is jumping up to 100 watts. And I'm gonna wait a second here because this just may be our boost, so it might come back down. And surprisingly enough, it actually looks like we might have a sustained 100 watt TDP in work mode. And of course, with the 14900HX, this thing is gonna pull some significant power. So we'll stop this. Now we're gonna to go to game mode and see what this thing does. We'll stress it out one more time. And right down here again, 150 watts, dropping down a little bit. Let this sit for a sec, just like we did in work mode, just to see if it comes on down from there. Up to 120 watts here. So yeah, on that CPU, we should hit some pretty nice clocks on all those cores there. Next thing I wanted to do was check out this RTX 5070. And for this, I'm gonna use Furmark. We're just gonna take it up to the maximum resolution. We'll run the test. And right over here, I've got Afterburner up and running. So our TGP up to, looks like 120 watts on the RTX 5070. So yeah, with the power supply they included here, I mean, we're gonna have more than enough. And while we're gaming, that CPU isn't gonna reach 140 watts with that boost. We're probably gonna be around 45, 65 watts there while gaming at 1440p on this machine with the CPU. But I do expect to see a couple TGP spikes here. So yeah, I'd say 120 there, 140 boost on the CPU. Now it's time to check out some benchmarks that I ran on this machine. And the first one we have is Geekbench 6, a single core coming in with a pretty decent 2,952, multi 14,560. And given that we've got 24 cores and 32 threads, I thought we'd see a bit higher over on the multi. But moving over to Cinebench R24, you can see that on single core, on single core, the 14900HX got a 128, beating out the M1 Max, M1 Ultra, everything down the list. But moving over to multi, we're up to 1,503, and up at the very top, the Apple M1 Ultra is beating this chip out in multi, but when it comes to single, I mean, it's pretty much got everything tackled there. Now it's time to move over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, and when it comes to Steel Nomad, we got a 3,005, and our FPS there was 30.05, and the last one I ran was Time Spy, coming in with a 13,938. I think if I ran this a couple more times, we'd probably be able to break 14,000 on this. And given the form factor, these synthetic benchmarks are looking really impressive. But these are synthetics, and now it's time to check out some real-world gaming. Jumping right in here with Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p Ultra Preset. And with that Ultra Preset, it usually just enables FSR to quality. But since we're using NVIDIA, I just changed it to DLSS looking great here and there's no doubt with this rtx 5070 even though it's a laptop version we're going to see some great 1440p performance we're seeing an average of around 75 fps with this game but there's a lot more that we can get out of this with the 5070 because we do have access to dlss4 multi-frame gen and this is the only game i'm going to be testing it with in this video you can see from Afterburner in the top left hand corner, instead of getting an average of around 74, 75, we're up to over 170 FPS on average. And again, it's not totally necessary because this system will run these AAA games over 60 at 1440p just fine, but this is gonna give us a little extra. I also wanted to throw one fighting game in, so we've got Mortal Kombat 1, no DLSS, and we're at Ultra High, which is the highest preset here, 1440p, running at a continuous 60 FPS, and when it comes to fighting games on this system, you shouldn't have an issue at 1440. In fact, if you don't mind using a little DLSS, you could run this at 4K at 60 all day long. Next up, we've got Spider-Man 2 at 1440p, very high with DLSS set to quality. And with DLSS completely off on this game, it still runs pretty decently, but we run out of VRAM. So you will see some dips here and there. In Afterburner, up in the top left-hand corner, I've got the VRAM listed. We're at 7.4 gigs, and with the RTX 5070, we've only got 8 gigs of VRAM to work with. So once that goes over, it's just not going to perform very well, and that's one of the reasons I was really hoping we'd see more VRAM with these newer cards. I also wanted to test out Red Dead 2. We're at an ultra high mix with no DLSS and you could just go to ultra with it, taking DLSS to balance, but I didn't want any kind of scaling going on and the game still looks amazing like this. 
and by the end of this run, I had an average of 72 FPS. And the final game I wanted to test here was Doom the Dark Ages 1440, high DLSS set to quality, and there's a big reason we're at high settings. Going to Ultra, Ultra Nightmare with 8 gigs of VRAM just isn't going to work out because we're already at 7.8 gigs of VRAM usage just at high here with a little bit of DLSS. So going over that, again, isn't going to net us great performance. The final thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU and GPU temps. So remember, we're in game mode from the Minus Forum Control Center. On that Intel Core i9 14900HX, our average CPU temp while gaming was 77 degrees Celsius, and the maximum I recorded, which was a spike, up to 95. So that thing was getting pretty hot in some cases, but in game mode, that can boost up to 140 watts, which is pretty crazy for a mobile chip. As for the GPU, that RTX 5070 laptop, Average temps while gaming were 66, and the maximum I recorded there was only 69 degrees Celsius. So overall, the new G7 Pro from Minus Forum is putting down some phenomenal performance. It would be nice if we had some manual fan control there so we could uh, get those temps down a bit. But in game mode, like I mentioned, I mean, up to 140 watts, I really don't think it needs to go up that high while gaming. If you want to run benchmarks and things like that just to get the maximum out of it, yeah, I can see that. So maybe they could go through and add a new mode in that Minisform Control Center, maybe like a performance mode or even take game mode down to like 100 watts and performance mode up to that 140. It would definitely keep those temps down. But for what we have here, I mean, this thing is really great. A 1440p super slim gaming machine that's run absolutely everything that I've thrown at it so far. I will have at least one more video with this thing, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But if you're interested in learning a little more about the new Minisporum G7 Pro, I'll leave some links in the description. Like always, thanks for watching.